Hi, Dr. Paul Hader here. Well, uh, yeah, I think you know that my wife and I live in Puerto Rico, the, the island uh, that belongs to the United States, and we got run over by a Category 5 hurricane. I have to say that things are not good here. Uh, you've probably seen things on the news, but it's <laughs> even worse, I'd have to say. Uh, but we will overcome. And uh, one of the biggest problems is, you know, getting food to people. It's slowly getting there, but it's not really getting to people without that much. I was just talking to a man in the store, you know, and there's long lines to get in the stores. And he said, in our town, which is 40 minutes away, there's no food at all. And, uh, boy, it's pretty bad. And so, if you care to make a donation, then I really, really appreciate that because there's a lot of starving people here. As a young lady was on the radio and she was in her, you know, late teens and her father was very old, her mother was blind and, and the roof had blown off their house and she was saying, what can I do? I don't know how to do anything to make things better. And uh, that kind of story is that goes across the island. You know, one of the biggest things we have is the grid, uh, electrical grid is down, and they only have 8% of it back. And uh, at this rate, it'll take us a year just to get San Juan back online. Thank heavens we finally got our solar system, our solar system uh, repaired, and we're up and running now. Uh, but most people have no power, and it's really hot here and hard to sleep at night. And, uh, uh, and a lot of people will live, even in San Juan, who are living in <laughs> big apartments, you know. All of it is electrical. They have no way to cook their food, uh, absolutely none. Uh, there is no water upstairs because electrical pumps pump water upstairs. I know one person who lives in a high-rise building and they have to wa carry water up 21 floors to get to their apartment. And boy, what a workout. Uh, but we have to do what we can do. As St. Ignacio said, you know, do what we can do. Do it what you can do every day. To, as though everything is, actually rests on you. And then pray with all your heart to God as though everything rests on Him. And that's what we really have to do. We have to actually get out and remember that God lives in our heart and we can do whatever we can do. And my wife and I, Flora and I, have, have been out giving food to the poor. People have been making some donations to us. And uh, we have been gathering up food wherever we can. And then, in fact, today we're going out to a poor community and giving out food to people. And so we're trying to make a difference in uh, people's lives. We even had some donations from Europe. Uh, so, and all the money goes to helping people. We're buying food and especially water. Water's a problem. Almost half the island has no water of any kind. It's potable. You know, and we also have leptospirosis, which uh, is starting here and that's deadly. And we don't want to have cholera and typhoid take over. And so water is, is a huge problem, uh, drinkable water. And I also want to remind people, if people in Puerto Rico are watching this, you know, eight drops of household bleach in a gallon of water. I'll say that again, eight drops of household bleach in a gallon of water and wait an hour and that will uh, actually purify the water. Or if you have... Uh, Yoda or iodine tincture, five drops in a liter, five drops in a liter, and then wait an hour, and that will make it uh, drinkable also. You know, these are emergency processes, so, uh, you know, and then we're in an emergency situation here, so we're trying to make water drinkable. Uh, luckily, I've been preparing for a long time. I have a huge water filter that we use, and we've been giving away water also. And, but if you feel like coming down and helping, uh, we would really, really, greatly appreciate that because um, we need volunteers to help, especially if you're an electrician and can help with the grid. 
there is no way to pay you, but uh, you'll be paid in uh, other ways. Uh, also, if you want to help people rebuild, you know, a lot of people, like I said, lost their homes. We need blue roofs, uh, the big tarps that go over top of houses. Well, we need people who know how to do construction, uh, all kinds of different things, and whatever way you can help. If you care to make a donation, go down below and there's a donation link and I, I really, really appreciate that because we, we, we know people in our, <laughs> that we know as regular people and are as friends who have nothing. You know, I had a lady who lived in a high rise building and she had no way to cook her dinner, no way to cook anything and even to make a cup of coffee, she had no way. And uh, I had some uh, propane cylinders. Yeah, you know you're not supposed to use them inside, but this is emergency situations. And I, I gave her one, and the lady started crying. And so, wow, it's pretty bad. And uh, but we shall overcome. Uh, we are moving forward every single day. But we uh, have a lot to overcome, you know. We have lots and lots of power poles along the roads. At least the roads are clear now. A huge amount of trees down. Uh, but they don't have enough power poles here to fix everything. And we don't have enough personnel to fix everything as far as the grid goes. And this is going to make a huge impact on the quality of life here in Puerto Rico because small businesses, you know, they don't have power, they can't be open, and uh, it makes it really difficult. Um, and they can only last for so long until, you know, they have to close the doors forever because they have no income coming in. So we really need to get the grid up and going. And uh, so it's, it's very imperative that we have your help, and uh, I don't know how, how to put this into words that'll get across even, even, even better. It's a, a dire situation, and I know it's really a dire situation for people like in Texas and uh, Louisiana and places that got hit by, and Florida, we got hit by other um, hurricanes also helped them too. And in California with the fires, wow, that's tough. But we all have to come together as humanity and help one another. You know, it, when we went to see John of God, and John of God there, one of the they have the healing triangle and the healing triangle one side is love one side is faith and the other bottom is charity and so the, what's holding all this thing up, up as far as the, the healing of humanity is charity itself the giving and we, we appreciate your prayers also because that's really important because we know now even with scientific studies that prayer is powerful and when people pray that makes a huge difference and uh, so if you can pray for us every day here in Puerto Rico, uh, that would make a, a huge difference also. And uh, anything that you can do to help will, will make a difference. I uh, also have friends from Tennessee that want to come down and help rebuild. And a lot of different groups are coming down. In fact, we have one family member, he's under Marines, and he came down, he got to, <laughs> he okay to come down and help, and he's been delivering food in, in the helicopters. <clears throat> but we are st uh, just at the beginnings of this. You know, on Wednesday, it'll be a month since the hurricane hit, and we still have a long, long, long way to go. It's uh, not much has been really done. I mean, we're still trees down, huge amount of wire transformers down. I mean, just in, the, <laughs> just in the three or four block area, there must be probably 60, 70 trees down, uh, probably 10 or 12 poles down, uh, wires everywhere. I mean, it's, uh, it looks like a spider web going on outside. Uh, pretty amazing. Um, in San Juan, there is some food getting in, um, but outer communities, there is no food whatsoever, other than what's being taken out into the areas by you know, choppers to the high mountain areas, you know. And we have a lot of poor people in Puerto Rico. There's no doubt about that. 45% of the people live in poverty here. And, and it would, 
I don't think it was evident to people how many people were living in poverty until the hurricane hit and all of a sudden the, all the foliage disappeared. <laughs> all the leaves, all the green, all that disappeared. It really looked like a stark, uh, like a bomb went off and everything was gone. And you could see these little shacks out there with no roofs on them, uh, homes completely gone. And it was like very evident that we have a lot of poor people out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, so I think it's really important. Yeah. It was also, there are other groups doing great jo jobs. The Catholic Church is here. The church here is actually gathering together food and uh, we went there to help them also. And people are waiting on long lines to get a, bags of foods and diapers, and uh, they need toilet paper also. Uh, you know, also mosquito repellent, which is really big. That's really important uh, because the mosquitoes have gone crazy here now with all the. We had 30, almost 38 inches of rain in a couple of days. That's a huge amount of water. Um, wow. It's a. And then for a while there, there's no batteries on the island at all, uh, com completely gone. But I see a, a couple stores bringing in a few batteries now, thank heaven. Uh, because sitting in the dark, you know, in the, in the middle of, <laughs> of the heat with mosquitoes biting you, uh, at least with a light, you can feel a little bit happier inside. Uh, <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And, you know, uh, we have a couple little dogs, and we also have to take care of them, too. You know, I'm not going to give up on taking care of our dogs, either. So uh, we didn't have a refrigerator for the longest time, and uh, so we'd get up and cook <laughs> cook the food for them. And just what we needed for the day, uh, just so we could get by for for them because they had no way to refrigerator to keep it, you know, good, good for them. And I've always cooked their food and made special, even organic food for them. But uh, we have to take care of everybody and everything. When everybody on our block is kind of working together, we've gone out and actually made huge pots of soup uh, with vegetables. You know, we'd buy vegetables. There are some fruit and uh, vegetable vendors around that, uh, boy, when the weather was huge lines at the market at the beginning, when the, it would take, take you hours to get in. And uh, some of the fruit and vegetable vendors, you know, we would know uh, there's no waiting at all, so that was great. Uh, so they've been a lifesaver and a really wonderful people. And I think we need to uh, re remember that those farmers out there, a lot of them lost their crops completely. You know, all the papayas are gone. Um, you know, I lost a few of my trees and my garden. And then they went down. Uh, a long gunberry tree, uh, all the all the bananas and plantains were disappeared. <laughs> you know, they were, the trees were all down. A huge pile of brush that we had to pull out of our yard. Um, so you got to start over. You got to start planting. In fact, I've been planting um, over again. It's a really, um, mm, and that's one thing about here is plantains are are a staple here. You know, plantains and bananas. So uh, it's very important we get those going again. But I chopped off my tr banana trees and plantain trees, and boy, they're already sprouting back up. Some of them are already three feet tall now. Uh, but it takes a few months for them to start to uh, you know, propagate again. And uh, from the time they start to flower and you get the bananas coming out, it's about 90 days after that until you see, you know, bananas that you can really eat. Uh, so anyway, I hope that you will make a donation. Uh, down below is a donation link. And uh, I hope you will pray for us and pray for all the other victims of disasters in the world. And uh, we will overcome all this adversity. It's uh, something that we have to uh, prepare for, you know. I mean, I've been pre preparing for a long time. I know, knew this type of thing was coming. And I know m more of this is coming uh, in general because of the climate change that we have going on. So we have to allow ourselves to make some plans, and, you know, make ways of... Uh, 
doing things that we uh, get ready for any kind of uh, hardship that might come our way and because we never know when it's going to happen and uh, we are experiencing it here in Puerto Rico in a big way and so I, I hope you will uh, open your heart and uh, be willing to give and if you care to subscribe I appreciate that and if make a donation down below and uh, uh, remember I love you